welcome to the 71st episode of the Friday Nightmare Podcast. I am one half of your posting posting team, podcasting team, Heather Fowl from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And also, if you listen to Horror for Dummies, I'm known as That Bitch. And with me, as always, is... The other half of the posting team tonight, <laughs> Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swords Creek, in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America. In, in Tim Davis's North- mom. <laughs> in Tim Davis's mom. <laughs> in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. Fully vaxxed, boosted and waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. mother of cats, a.k.a. man with humongous ego, (laughs) a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. uh, Tim's Pimp. (laughs) And also, also because the horror for dummies always say it, Mr. Sexy Scott Crawford. They talk so much about you on this next show that's on Patreon that will be released to the um the general population on sunday oh, we're recording this um after their patreons come out because for some reason they think they're good enough for a patreon oh damn <laughs> you should hear what they say about me mm, they not say shocked. not nice things it's like i'm rudolph the red-nosed reindeer and they laugh and call me names and one day they're going to need me to save horror for dummies as it sinks into oh, oblivion ho, ho. like if only only we had that bitch <laughs> I mean, come and save us. To be fair, it makes a lot of sense that would be brought up a lot in this coming episode just because of the movie they are talking about. Yeah, I, yeah. Which, honestly, I am salty as fuck. They didn't have me on. Tim, yeah, look Tim. who the bitch is now. <laughs> if Mother- you release this video, you would see, I've never seen Scott this angry. And Scott and I have actually gone into fights. So, like, this is serious, Tim. If I were you, I would sleep with one eye open. Look at Scott's pretending to crush his fist into his hand. <laughs> He's so tough. <sighs> so thank you to all of our, our loyal listeners. We will be doing something a little bit different moving forward. Uh, we're getting rid of movie reviews. Short story. <laughs> um, typically in this show, we've t- picked themes over the years and we have focused in on them. We've done everything from fun houses to sexual identity to Airbnbs to Australian horror to horror around the world and covered various different countries. Um, We have decided to step away from that, uh, mostly because a lot of people do movie reviews and, you know, that doesn't make Scott and I special. Lots of people do them. And when we get feedback about this show, what people seem to appreciate the most is our new watches. Um, Scott and I, well, especially Scott watches everything and anything. Um, And, you know, that seems to be what people care about. And Scott and I want to use our time productively. And Scott definitely used it by watching how many 2022s did you watch, Scotty? Oh, shit. I, uh, I mean, since uh, the entire year, just for this week. Just, just this week. Now, mind you, we're delayed in three weeks of this episode because we did do a wrestling episode a couple weeks ago. Right. Uh, so let's... My alarm's going off. Uh, let me check real quick to make sure because I didn't add everything on this list because there are things I watched that were that bad. Already... You didn't want to talk about? Oh, are you? Already, oh. I already talked about. Okay. Yeah, you already talked about. So let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty. Yep, twenty-two. That's incredible. Twenty-two, twenty twos. Bam. So Scott has been watching movies like a fucking boss so combine that with the fact that we really do like our out of the dark dark topic and sometimes when we get to the out of the dark topic i find that i'm tired and so scott and we don't give it the time and attention it deserves and really you want a movie review listen to all the billion other fucking podcasts that do movie reviews out there (laughs) Right. Um, and and who knows, maybe there'll be like a movie that we really want to talk about in depth and we could yes. even do it in the out of the dark segment or something. Yes. So, you know, it's not to say we'll never re- review movies ever again. Possibly we won't. But <laughs> I think what we want to focus more on is our 2022 watches, our older watches, if we watch something interesting, you know, what's new in the horror community or what we've done or something that we think is cool. 
and then out of the dark because we have a better time doing that and that seems to be what people want to hear and it keeps our show to a reasonable level level reasonable amount of time and that's better for scotty for editing and better for you for listening most people don't want to listen to a two and a half hour show is my understanding even yeah. though it's us and i assume people want to because we're not tim and daniel so we actually have intelligent things to say um <laughs> I love the shit talking. Just kidding, Tim. I love you too, in quotations. No, she doesn't. No, that's not true. I do. I love Pookie. Tim and Daniel. I fantasize all the time about going to Australia and seeing them. That would be freaking awesome. Like, I don't know, though. Tim's pretty hot. I don't know. I might get really nervous around him in person. Oh, I'd, I'd have a raging boner the entire time. Like, no, time. like, no. Well, you probably would, but, like, I actually do think Tim's really hot. Oh, he is. He's a damn like good-looking dude. And, like, his wife's smoking, too, honestly. There's a sandwich that I would love to be part of. <laughs> hey, you never know, right? You got to give everything a shot, right, Scotty? Exactly. I mean, I why just... not feel <laughs> feel just frisky and free? Speaking of that, uh, one of our first 2022 movies is a, is a game that we want to play with Daniel and Tim, and it's called The Friendship Game. <laughs> <laughs> you like that lead in there, Scott? I love it. All right, so let's get into The Friendship Game. I haven't pulled up my list yet. That's my bad. But this was a movie that we watched. I believe it's probably a screener. I don't know if it's available anywhere yet. Um, to do, I jumped the gun with my line without so many fucking movies. Here we are, The Friendship Game. All right, The Friendship Game is an 87-minute runtime. Win together or die alone <laughs> is the tagline. <laughs> a group of teens in a small town come across a strange object that tests their loyalty to each other with increasingly destructive consequences that the deeper they go, the deeper into the game they go. Um, this has a 1.8 rating on the letterbox. Um, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's, an, it's an interesting one. I think I liked it more than Scotty did. It's a good little take on teenage horror, horror, low budget, the idea of a glorified Rubik's Cube being a source of evil uh, that can challenge your friendships. I thought the acting in it for the actors that were in it were pretty good. Um, I enjoyed the story. I, I think the ending will lose people a little bit because I think they're playing on the concept of uh, something that they talk about midway through the movie, um, the idea of... Yeah, Scott knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. What did you think, Scott? Um, well, like I say, it's been about three weeks, and this I think was the first movie I watched in those three weeks. So it's a bit I'm a bit uh, foggy on it all. Foggy. But yeah, but uh yeah, I thought it was okay. Um I really enjoyed like the first like first and second act of this film, like where it was building up, like because you know, I do love these like let's play a game type and it's like a game based horror film. It's true. And Scott's always like, Can we pretend saw when I come visit you? Heather? Yeah. <laughs> Except I want to do this uh what I've been hearing about this new Christian version of Saw that's somewhere out there. Really? Are you serious? Yes, there is apparently a Christian version of Saw where People are getting punished for what yelling Christian. at the people at Applebee's after they've gone to fucking service. Is that what it is? No, because I mean, those people service at Applebee's and now you shall punish. No, because those people are Christians themselves. So they're not going to get punished for that. They're going to punish oh, right. for they're going to punish you for being gay. They're going to punish you. For oh, being, you know, wow. That problem. That, that's kind of what I assume. Even, <laughs> even better. Oh, man, they're going to punish me after I'm done with Tim and Delisa. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Um, but yeah, anyways, yeah, the, th <laughs> the third act, I was completely lost on what the hell happened. And it just was, it was an okay movie leading up to those two acts. And then when that third act hit, I'm just going, man, I don't even care. I, yeah. well, fine, it's fine. It was, it was, yeah, I, I think the third act did kind of lose it a little bit, but it was entertaining enough. If you really like low budget teen oh my goodness what's this ghosty object gonna do then you'll probably enjoy this film it is available on the google voodoo um redbox youtube and amazon for purchase i would say unless you like those things don't bother if not it's uh worth a 2.99 3.99 purchase so yeah i'd say it's eh, $1.99 or free <laughs> or free like scott on a friday night Oh, not just on a Friday night. Every, <laughs> every, every night. night. Every night, Scott's free. Actually, yeah. he pays you. <laughs> I, come on, I need, I need some company. I'll pay you. <laughs> He's like, Sorry, Scott. I shouldn't make money. I'm no better. I don't know why. One time, I was listening back to our show, and I said something like, Scott and I are ugly, so we try harder. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. 
<laughs> we do try hard. Just so we're clear, Scott and I try very, very hard. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are definitely try hard. <laughs> we are definitely try hard. You know what was try hard was this movie, which I did not see coming. I did not Oof. see this one coming. Uh, thank you, Dave Bailey. Shouts out to Dave Bailey from the Cemetery, Cemetery Gates podcast. Dave is a superior podcaster to both Scott and I. Um, definitely more intelligent, really good looking, like smoke show, bite fist, Dave Bailey. Yeah, he's, and he's smoke show number two. Though the only competition he really has is, of course, his absolutely gorgeous wife and their really cute Great Dane. The Great Dane's a Oh my God. Like, like that's like kind of the the icing on the cake with Dave Bailey but he he submitted this one to us and we both watched it and OMG I'll let Scott start off with his thoughts and introducing the movie all right so the film we were talking about surprisingly came from Blumhouse like I was shocked when I like at first I wasn't shocked when I seen the name but as the movie went on I'm going oh okay I did not I was not expecting that. So this film is called Soft and Quiet. And the subtitle or the cover title for it is An American Nightmare. Ain't that the fucking truth? So the synopsis is elementary school teacher Emily is organizing a mixer of like-minded women, but an altercation between a woman from Emily's past and the group leads to a volatile chain of events. Now, this is a movie that Scott and I might spoil in the future. Yeah, this is, I will say this right now. I did not know what I was getting into when I watched this. And holy fuck, is this film heavy. Um, mm-hmm. This film had, I'll, I'll, this this film had really strong performances all around. It was beautifully shot. The context, though, is very, very, very heavy. A mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, little too real, like to the point where when I was watching this film, I was fucking legit angry. So yeah. angry that I almost gave it a bad review because of how angry I was. And then as I sat with it, I realized I can't do that because this film did exactly what it was wanting to do. And that is to piss you off and make you see what is really happening well, out there. Hopefully it pisses you off. Yeah. I mean, its goal is to do that. You want to know where your friends stand? Have them watch this film and see who they sympathize with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll find out pretty quickly on their values. Yeah. Um, And that's just a fact. Yeah, because this film starts off, I was saying this film kind of just starts off like, you know, Oh, you know, it's just okay. What's going on? Okay, learning a little bit about it. It's kind of it's, it's like it's like cooking a frog in boiling in water that they turn the heat up. We're the frog. Yeah, we have it no seems idea. Harmless what's coming. at first, <laughs> it just goes wackadoodle. Is like I in very few movies have I had to sit there and go, "This is a movie. Mm-hmm. These are actors." Martyrs did that to me, and this one did that to me. Yeah, what kept repeating in my head is the uh, trailer from Last House on the Left. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. Because holy shit, did this get under my skin. Like, and it legit made me just very fucking angry. Now, I will say, if for some reason political issues are not your thing, you probably don't want to watch this movie, but you probably should. Yeah. But you know what? That's cool. You do you at the end of the day. Uh, it is available on the iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, um, where are we? YouTube and Cineplex store for my Canadian friends. I think this is worth any purchase price. It's incredibly well acted, incredibly well directed, um, incredibly well written, well delivered, fucking incredible. Like even if you just watch it for the cinema piece of it, like what a good piece of cinema like, film it is. Yeah. It's a fucking excellent film. So yeah. And uh Take in mind, too, that this was directed by a Hispanic woman. And uh, so that that will like kind of give uh, more value to this film when you watch it. And also, like, <clears throat> this is one I definitely recommend, though I just recommend, you know, be prepared for something heavy. Because this I can see being in people's top tens because of how good of a, like, how well made of a film this is. This is something that I would uh, dread watching again. But if I ever did a podcast, like this is something Darren Wilson should definitely cover for- Only Darren Wilson is smart enough to handle this one on a podcast. Right, Darren? 100%. Or for dummies, this would be too (laughs) too much for them. Well, and they also don't live in America, so they'd be like- They just need to stick to simple movies like Gremlins. (laughs) 
uh oh scott's mm-hmm. like you crossed the line there he laughed and then he was like though i did make them watch landmine goes click so i guess they can't handle some pretty hard films oh they, they definitely can <laughs> <laughs> this is but- up there tim is one of my top films ever landmine clicks in this one um that gives you an idea of how intense this film is tim just so yeah. you know if you choose to watch it do not watch it with your kids around oh no 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 no, no. no. this is not a well let's sit down with my son and watch this film maybe not yet maybe when he's older but um, maybe in about two years yeah yeah oh with tim's kids actually fuck that tim tim shows them like serbian film for a good time <laughs> <All right. laughs> follow um and Han- hannibal holocaust Han- hannibal holocaust um <laughs> i guess you'll do the next one because i couldn't even get through this i couldn't get through the first fucking five minutes so hopefully you have something nice to say all right yeah like i think you should have waited a little bit longer because i think you would have dug it a little more but uh this film is called the incel tapes yes the incel tapes uh after a failed suicide attempt a self-proclaimed incel must get laid before his 26th birthday or he's going to kill it is a very simple plot synopsis and this could be found on tubi it's found footage and i'm watching this and i'm just going oh this character i despise this character with every fiber of my being i don't like what's going on here like i'm about to turn this off because this is dumb but i'm like fuck it I'm at work. I'll sit through it while I'm doing my work and just like kind of like half-ass pay attention to it. And I'm glad I did because mm. as it went on, it introduces a couple more main characters that he kind of has a like starts riding along with. They do like a road trip type thing. A road trip and to get pussy? Is that what they're doing? Kind of. It's almost like a uh, road trip to do this guy's bucket list because they think he has cancer because he lied to him. Oh, okay. And so they're going and doing this road trip and shit like that. And getting laid is on that bucket list. But, um, ah, right. but they're going to do this road trip and two of the characters specifically are just fucking pieces of shit the main one that i talked about from the beginning and one of the other ones the other one i feel sympathy for but uh you know what i'm this went in directions that i was like okay you know this is gonna happen this is gonna happen you know paint by very paint by numbers i'm like this is very blah and then the third act happens and i go oh shit okay this went somewhere i did not expect it to go and now this movie has my full fucking attention it it did like a complete swerve on me and like started going down a different path. And yeah, I was along for the ride for the rest of it. I will, I will say right off did the bat. It, uh, did it slap Keith Lee in the ring? <laughs> yeah, it did a swerve. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, but yeah, it did, uh, ended up going in a direction that I did not expect. And I was pleasantly surprised by that because it definitely grabbed my attention and made it a little more harder to focus at work. Cause I was like, okay, shit, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what's going on now. Um, I will say this is not a good movie. I will say this is above average. I gave it a three out of five. Like it's, you know, six out of 10. So it's not a full Tim Davis. It's more of a Rob Humphreys. Yeah, it's more of a Rob Humphreys where it's like, ooh, yeah, I, 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 I can get behind this. Yeah, nice and short. Just, yeah, just like Like me. a dwarf. <laughs> But yeah, that, that is the incel tapes, and I believe it is only available on Tubi. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even say Tubi on Letterbox, which is kind of. But funny, you did but... watch it on Tubi. Yeah, yeah that's so where sweet. I found it on Tubi. Yeah, so on Tubi. <laughs> well, <laughs> if anyone's Tubi's. interested. Uh, the next one, both Scotty and I watched. It's a documentary, but we'll talk briefly about it. Uh, Pennywise: The Story of It. So it's talking about the. 19 it's 1980 that those movies came out right 1990 oh 1990 fuck my life um it's 126 minutes in length the making of a monster 30 years plus after its release the popular two-part miniseries it and its infamous villain pennywise lives on in the minds of horror fans this documentary captures not only the buzz it saga generated in the 90s but also the lasting impact it's had an entire generation. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Uh, bottom line is there's lots of people in it, including the lovely Tim Curry. Um, it's a very, very good documentary. I don't know. It's probably one of the better ones that have come out horror wise. It's very um, inclusive of all the actors that are in it. They have some nice tributes for the actors that are no longer with us. Yep. Um, yeah. Overall, I thought it was great. I, I thought it was very informative. I think if you're a fan of Stephen King and a fan of, um, the it movies, whether you like the adaptation or the original, I think it's great. And and it's really cool to hear Tim Curry talk about some of his opinions on being in this movie. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, I really, I did really dig this documentary because I was, especially because I grew up watching this miniseries on TV. like I Over caught, and over again. <laughs> yes, I actually did. But uh, uh, yeah. I, caught, I caught it on the TV with my mom back in the day and watched, would stay up late and then regret it the next morning for school. But uh 
And this is where a fear of clowns definitely permeated the culture because Pennywise was absolutely terrifying, especially if you're younger and watch this. And yeah, just getting the behind the scenes on a lot of this stuff was very fascinating. I'm really, uh, was really impressed that they got some of the actors that they did to do an interview. Like they even had the little cute blonde girl from the very beginning of the movie when she's riding her tricycle that gets just, she only has like a very small part and then she disappears because of Pennywise. They actually interviewed her and apparently uh, one of the things she, like I'll just give a little story here, but yeah, apparently one of the things was they uh, were tr- uh, they were trying to avoid having her meet Tim Curry while he was in makeup because they didn't want to scare her because she was so young. And so uh, I guess after she was done filming, she walked by and seen Tim Curry all dressed up and he just looked over and goes, what you doing, little girl? Or something like that. And just mortified the shit out of her to the point that she has still not watched this movie since, like, it's come out. <laughs> That's, yeah. So that gives you a, a little sneak peek of the kind of stuff that you can get with this documentary. So uh, sadly, it has not been picked up by Shudder. So if uh, actually, looking- I think this is on Screenbox. Screenbox. Okay. According to Letterbox, we'll add Screenbox to it. Uh, It is available on iTunes, Google, Voodoo, YouTube, and Microsoft Store. I think it's worth any rental price you want to pay for Oh, 100%. You know, if you're a really big It fan, I say just buy it. You probably will just be fine to do that. Um, And then the next one is you, Scotty, but we both did watch this one. All right, let me pull it up on Letterboxd here. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about is a South Korean film called Midnight, directed by Kwon Oh Seong. A uh, serial killer ruthless, ruthlessly hunts down a deaf woman through the streets of South Korea after she witnesses his brutal crime. Uh, this is once again another one recommended by our good friend Dave Bailey. So thank you very much because I watched this and holy fuck, South Korea knows how to do mm-hmm. some fucking amazing films. Mm-hmm. This, I will say though, this one does not have a lot of bloodshed and is not like extremely hard to watch like some of their other serial killer style films, but holy hell, the chase scenes in this are intense um, the acting in this is just fucking through the roof. I absolutely, I loved the uh, the main characters and her mother in this. That like I was rooting for them through the entire thing. Like you just felt so bad for them and wanted them to get through it all. And the serial killer was intimidating as hell. He was smart and he was uh, very good at playing like other people and just like basically just making everybody think he's someone he's not and keeping himself disguised. Like this movie is a great, great cat and mouse film. Absolutely. Like, Like it's just go, go, go pretty much from the beginning. Probably the best one since Hush. Yeah. To be honest with you. Um, this is a really, really good film. So it's available. Scott said all the things. Like, honestly, I don't, there's nothing more I want to add without giving stuff away. I want to be very conscious of that. So it is available on Amazon, iTunes, Google, Plex for free, and Tubi for free. You just have to have ads. So obviously, if you, you access it through the first three, you'll be paying for it, no ads. Um, if you watch it through Plex or Tubi, you'll just have advertisements, and it's definitely worth your time. Yep, and that is for Canada. For American, for American audiences, it is free on Amazon, on Amazon Prime. Um, then let's see, it's got Google, iTunes, Vudu, and then Plex as well. Coolio. So you guys have it free on Amazon and Plexi. Yep. Awesome. All right, yeah. your turn. This gem. Oh, okay. Uh, let me bring that one up. Dang, I forgot I can keep watching so many movies and interspersed in between years. I know. I don't know how you remember all of them. Letterbox. <laughs> Hashtag thank you, Letterbox. Letterbox, the real MVP of Friday Nightmares podcast. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe we should say Letterbox enough and maybe they'll sponsor us and we can Letterbox, be better Letterbox, for horror. Better, better than horror for dummies. They don't have a sponsor. That's true, because we're better than you and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like how many listeners do you guys have 50 no, <laughs> we have no interest um, <laughs> but uh the next film uh, is also one i found on amazon prime mm-hmm. i was just kind of scrolling to see what you know prime has to offer lately and uh this one is called father of flies a haunting tale of family life a vulnerable young boy finds his mother pushed out of the family home by a strange new woman and he must and he must confront the terrifying supernatural forces that seem to move in with her. Uh, this film, I wasn't sure what to expect going into it. Like, I uh, didn't watch a trailer or anything like that. I have seen, like, a couple still images. I'm like, oh, this kind of looks creepy. And, yeah, I really ended up digging this. It's, uh, it does have a very creepy atmosphere. 
Um, you have no idea what really is going on. The uh, stepmother is very intimidating and scary, and she wears this creepy ass mask that's supposed to basically, it's almost like a CPAP machine, almost like it's supposed to help her breathe or whatever. Um, but she wears it every once in a while, and it's creepy as fuck. But yeah, I found the performances in this to be really good. It has like this very dark, creepy setting. And then there was a scene that I remember seeing from a trailer, and I was like, oh no shit, this is that movie I wanted to see a while ago because I had a. Uh, I won't spoil it because, but yeah, it's something that I watched a trailer for and I messaged you about it, Heather, and like was like, oh yeah, this is the one that I, we'd seen the trailer. And we're like, oh, that looked creepy. And we ended up, I ended up finally watching it, not knowing this was the name of it. And yeah, I really did dig this. Uh, but yeah, this one is available on Amazon Prime, iTunes, Google Play, Vudu, and Amazon Video to rent. Booyah. All right. The next one is The Ghosts of Monday. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is an 80 minute runtime. A group of US filmmakers travel to Cyprus to film a documentary in the tragic famous hotel Gala? Uh, Gula. 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 A once popular resort where more than 100 people died in mysterious circumstances. What began as just another day at the office will turn into a terrifying journey into the unknown. It's, it's unknown why this movie was made. Um, oh, this, this movie's not great. I'm not even gonna fucking bullshit. There's this. There's a guy that's in it. Um, who just acts creepy the entire time. Bruce, I think his name is. Oh, uh, is Julian that uh? Sands? Yeah, Julian Sands. He is so good at playing fucking creepy. Like he's the best part of this movie, but he's not good enough for you to watch this movie. No, um, unfortunately, go watch him I... in a billion other films that he's been in. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, because unfortunately, that is the reason why I wanted to watch this because it was because of Julian Sands. And yeah, this film was just very mediocre. Spooky. I, was, it, I would even give it lower than mediocre. It was boring. I kept it writing because I was like, well, I got to finish it because Scott's watched so many 2022s and I need something. But it was very lifetimey feel to oh, it. Oh, it definitely had that to it. Very, yeah, duck yuck. It's available on Prime in Canada. I don't recommend it. I don't know if it's available anywhere else in the U.S. Oh, uh, let me check. Not that oh. we think we should. anyone should watch this by any stance. If Scott can't find it, it's a blessing. That means that <laughs> it wasn't meant for you to see. Um, yeah, it's just avail It's available on Amazon Prime here, too. Yeah, like, no. Honestly, it's not worth your time if you're watching 2022s. Like, I don't know if you have a partner who doesn't really like horror movies and likes lifetime he kind of like, oh, it's a mystery, then yeah, maybe they'll like this shit. But the ending's fucking weird. Makes no sense. It's weird. I'm yeah, not a fan. I'll say, yeah, I, I gave it like a two or a two and a half. Like it was just very That's very fair. generous of you. Yeah. Well, trust me, after some of the shit I have seen, which are about ready to talk about one of them, is there, you know, I've seen way worse. That's true. That's true. Well, let's get into the what. So we don't really recommend this one, but it's on Prime. Uh, the Ghosts of Monday, if you decide that you want to go down that road. And it's not a found footage film. It sounds like it will be a found footage film. It is right. not a found footage film. Yeah. Just so clear. I, I think it would have been, I think it would have done better if it was. Yeah. Yeah, it would have done much better. Uh, what's this next one, Scotty? Okay. So I am a sucker for very bad Christmas movies, aka Jack Frost and Jack Frost 2 and like, you know, Killer I like Showman. the Jack Frost films. I think they're oh. funny. Oh, they're terrible, but they're I enjoy them. Like yeah. they're like they're not good movies, but they're entertaining. And that's kind of what I was hoping Elves 2022 would be. I <laughs> I could be so, so wrong and further from the truth of this one. So the synopsis is. After a freak accident kills one of her friends, Clover discovers that a group of elves Clover? Have been, Clover. <laughs> oh, nice. That discovers that a group of elves have been scattered throughout town, each representing the seven deadly sins. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get the fuck out of here. Is that seriously the fucking movie? It's a, it's, it oh is. Oh my god. Elves it's, mixed with the Bible. Okay. <laughs> it's a it's a race. I guess they're both a fairy tale, so I guess that makes a lot of sense. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> It's a race against time to survive the elves' wrath before Christmas ends. Dot, dot, dot. All right. I almost wanted my life to end after watching this. Um, <laughs> but uh, that great, huh, Scotty? You, fans out there of us, do you like Truth or Dare, the Blumhouse movie? Yes. Did you like Smile? Yeah. Were you a fan of like ideas from Krampus? Yeah. Go watch those movies. <laughs> Because this movie does 
the one biggest no-no that any low-budget film should ever do, and that is bring up truth or dare like as uh like they one of the characters say like something about this is like truth or dare no truth or dare did way better than this and is much better made than this um and also this film feels like it was directed by an alien that watched a shit ton of sitcoms and said i got it i know how the human behavior is i am going to direct these kids and actors Hey guys, let's act in this movie. Oh shit, I don't know how to write a script. Let me use the AI generated scripts that come out of make those terrible, terrible like Facebook posts. And we'll go from dialogue like that and then just act as wooden as fucking possible. And you know what else? <laughs> We're going to have a scene where there's a party and it is going to be the lamest fucking party you've ever seen where we're just sitting around in a circle <laughs> in a warehouse with no music, maybe a few strands of Christmas lights. And y'all are going around going, go, yeah, this is a great party. And act like you're dancing and drinking and there's no music. And it's the most awkward thing you've ever watched. And hey, it sounds like my eyes. house, what we do when you come visit. But we have music playing. <laughs> and we actually know each other and our friends. These are like complete <laughs> strangers that don't know how to act and just like give, we're given dialogue by aliens that thought they knew the human race. And no, this movie's bad. This movie's very, very bad. I, I lost brain cells. Be afraid. Lost... Be very afraid. I remember uh, I, there was one movie we watched for one of our reviews. And I remember me saying, I uh, now officially hate movies because of this film. Yeah, yeah. I, I was wrong. I now officially hate movies. <laughs> now you this, really hate them. <laughs> the, like, this is what I do for you listeners. I torment <laughs> myself for you because i am a glutton for punishment and i just gotta watch something new the oh man 18s the scott crawford story it's all for you friday night it's all for you now i'm gonna go gouge my eyes out so scott uh where could everyone find this gem that you praise that rob humphrey's gonna go watch now because you praised it so much and then tell us how shitty it is um you can find it in a dumpster fire near you <laughs> um it is on iTunes, Vudu, Google Play, Amazon Video, and Vudu for free. If you're really wanting to punish yourself, did you hear that, Rob? Free, free, did you hear that? Free on Vudu. Do not pay for this. This is bad. This is very, very bad. Rob Scott says it's number one movie of the year. You better watch it. You number haven't trolled one. this in a while, Rob. We're wondering where you are. This is very true. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm scared. Right. So the next one is. <laughs> It's hard to follow that show, but <laughs> this one is called Hounded. It is a British show. Uh, it is a 94 minute runtime, an old tradition, new blood, a stately home robbery takes an evil turn one night when a gang of young thieves are caught by the owners of the house and then hunted across the estate for the proprietor's entertainment. Um, it's like the hunt, but not it's, it's what you're assuming is what happens. Okay. <laughs> There's no deep black year rich versus the poor best part of this movie there's a pack of hound dogs that at one point are supposed to be eating somebody but you can just tell they're licking him and do they sing you ain't nothing but hound and they're dogs. super fucking adorable so like the, the guy's trying to act scared and you can tell that they're like <laughs> 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 but they cut away soon enough that you think that maybe they ate him um maybe maybe, not, maybe they're acting like a cat where they lick you first then they bite you because they right. want to taste the flesh um samantha bond is in this movie and she's an actually well-known actress she was in a bunch of 007 movies she's been in emma she's been in a lot of english films so I'll, like they got people that can act definitely got people that can act uh one of the guys that was in shark bake earlier this year was also in this film um james lance another british actor so they definitely like went and got some british talent for this and i do know that fox hunting is outlawed in britain now i not to brag or anything but one time i went to england you went to um, england <laughs> no and way and i'm tell, going back tell me I'm, more and i'm going back again scott tell me more and i'm going to scotland this time in january oh, oh i can't so. wait to hear about it for seven months straight <laughs> Do you guys know I went to Scotland? <laughs> Fancy you! I'm so glad we don't do movie reviews. This gives us much more energy to insult each other. 
So the movie sounds like what you would think it would sound like. It's a British film where rich people hunt poor people. If that sounds like something that you would like, it's 94 minutes. It doesn't overstay your welcome. Then it is available on iTunes, Google, YouTube, DirecTV, and Amazon. It's not the best survival movie. It's not the worst. So do what you will with that information. And you're next. All right. So the next film, you know, most people decorate for Christmas to get themselves in the Christmas spirit. Not Mr. Smoke Show. Mr. Smoke Show continues the trend of watching, hopefully, a very bad but entertaining Christmas movie. And I got another one for y'all here. And that is The Killing Tree. Uh, The little subtitle thing is Deck the Halls with Blood. On on Christmas Eve, a scorned widow casts an ancient spell to resurrect her executed husband. However, when the spell goes wrong, the husband is brought back as an evil Christmas tree, (laughs) hell-bent on getting revenge on the one who caused his execution. The body count keeps rising as the tree hunts them down. I oh, it? I'm actually gonna say I had fun with this. It was it was not a good movie. It's like not it's not bad like elves. It's not terrible like another one that you and I both watched. Oh, we'll get but, to that gem. <laughs> like this one was actually above average. I was chuckling. I had some entertainment with it because the acting wasn't terrible. And uh yeah, it's just it's about a Christmas tree running around killing people. It, like reminds me of Tree Venge in a way, except for the tree talks and like has the serial killer's voice and he's like learning new powers as he's like learning his new tree form. And so he can like reach out branches and they go shooting out and like wrap around people's throats and he like cuts them open with the pine needles and he can throw Christmas lights and all sorts of other silly shit. And it's, it's got some decent gore to it. And like, it's just silly and ridiculous. It's basically the Jack Frost, but with a Christmas tree instead, like that kind of like humor. I like it. it. It's actually, pre- I was fairly entertained by it. Like, it's once again, not a good movie, but entertaining and easy to watch. And where would we find this gem? Uh, this gem, for me, I found it on Tubi. It is also Ooh. on iTunes, Vudu, Yay. Google Play, and Amazon Video. Watch it on Tubi? Yeah, watch on Tubi, because it's it's totally like a Tubi watch. Oh, yeah, it is. And, uh, okay, so this next one, did you watch this movie? Uh, let's see. No, I did not. Fuck. I don't remember this movie too much, so tell you how great it was. (laughs) This movie is called Dead Bride. It is an 83-minute runtime. After her father's death, Allison, her partner Richard, and their baby return to her childhood home. Following a few shocking supernatural events, Allison discovers that she and her family have been living with a terrible curse unreleased by a past bride killed by Allison's grandfather. Yeah, I barely remember this film. I just remember it feeling lifetime-y and the acting was so, like cheese cheese and of course like the husband's cheating and having an affair though that doesn't really tie into the plot but somehow they try to make it tie into the plot of course course. it's just fucking stupid this is a skip yet again unless you have someone in your life like that really likes lifetime films and wants something that's a little scary uh, it's available on iTunes, Voodoo, YouTube, Voodoo, Microsoft Store, Microsoft Store, and YouTube. Um, no, no, don't go down that road. <laughs> no, if I can't even remember enough about it, then it's probably not that good. Um, yeah, so that's Dead Bride. Next one. Good to know. All right. <laughs> yeah, there's not, when you don't have much to say, there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is one that uh, our good friend Brandon Orlick had uh, seen a trailer for and was like, I wanted, he wanted to watch it. So I was like, oh, fuck it. I'll give it a shot too. It is uh, called Reportage November. And it's a found footage film about this uh, mysterious death of a mother and the disappearance of her child leads a group of freelance journalists to the out, outback of Sweden. The group of four Sweden. led by Sweden. Yeah. Uh, birdie, 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 birdie. <laughs> uh The group of four, led by the famous journalist Lynn Soderquist, will make a reportage about the happening and try to find something the police missed. Equipped with cameras and supplies to survive in the forest for days, they wander out in the woods to find the truth. Um, Yeah, this has a very Blair Witch Project feel to it with the whole getting lost in the woods and like just people wandering off from each other and weird, strange happenings happening at night. Um, but this one where I was not a big fan of the Blair Witch Project, like I respect what, for what it did and whatnot, but I just was not a fan of watching it. I really did enjoy this. Like it's a six out of 10, like it's, you know, enjoyable, easy to watch. 
And I so thought it's a the Rob Humphreys. Yes. <laughs> so I, you know, I really did dig it. It was uh, very easy to watch and like had some really good creepy moments to it. And the reveal of what is actually happening to the people that are disappearing in these woods is actually pretty freaking creepy. And yeah. like, there's some, some shots that just happen and they're gone. But when they happen, you're like, Oh shit. It like, it gives you the creeps, but I will just give this a like heads up. This is subtitled because it is in Swedish, but, uh, yeah, if you want to check out a found footage film, if you're just kind of gobbling them up like I am, then I definitely recommend this one. It's because uh, even our friends Donna Nelly and Tim Walker both gave this a three out of five stars. Ooh. And, but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I would say it's worth at least checking out, especially because it's free on Tubi. Uh, it's also available on YouTube, Amazon Video and Google Play Movies. Nice. Booyaka shaka. Good recommendation. Booyaka shaka. <laughs> All right. The next one that we have is another found footage film. It is Ghosts of Hiroshima. Uh, this is an upsetting film, um, partly because it Hiroshima happened. And um, that shit's not far off of what happened in some of this stuff. Not the ghost stuff, but uh, the nuclear effects. Scott, you know what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm try- I'm trying to remember the movie though because I did watch it. Okay, so uh, the synopsis is: uh, 77 years after the bombing of Hiroshima, a malevolent force lingers at the site of the nuclear calamity. Those who encounter this vengeful spirit are forever consumed by its wrath. The the nephew comes back to Japan. Yes. Okay. There we go. Yeah. It's like I'm trying to think. I'm like, okay, what are who are yeah. the characters? Because I'm remembering like images in my head of it. Yeah. So it's upsetting. I will say right now, most upsetting is there's an interview that's in this this yes. done documentary style that talks about the day the bomb went off. And it's fucking disgusting what happened yeah. to those people. It really is. Um, and I would say that is probably the strongest thing of this film. Um, the ending kind of unfortunately doesn't deliver. Right. Um, majority of it though is very, very well done. I think if you enjoy found footage, it's worth a watch. And it's also on Tubi and Amazon. So it was Tubi for me, and I believe it was Tubi for you. Yes, it was. So it is a free watch, um, 79 minute runtime. You're not gonna waste your time with it. Um, I would say that it's definitely entertaining, it's good. Uh, I recommend it. I recommend checking it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry for the lull there for a second, everybody, but yeah, I was just trying to remember. No, I, that's okay. You watched a lot of movies. Yeah, so, but yeah, I do agree. Like, especially that interview was just kind of heartbreaking to hear yeah. that hear that person's story and, you know, just like, yeah, all the shit that they had, that they went through during all that. And yeah, it was it's fucking disgusting. It's fucking yeah, disgusting. It really is. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, we won't get into it on the podcast, but that's, that's real fucking horror, right? Yeah. Like, what happened and, to the to the people of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki is fucking inexcusable. So it's, you know, it's it's a little close to home if you would know anything about the actual situation, but yeah. Yeah, and, um, and yeah, like even the main guy that was in like the main focus like of the storytelling, I believe, was he did a good job. Like I found this to be one, like a right around reportage November rating for me. It was a three yeah. out of five. Like I... Like I enjoyed my time with it, though it was a little more obviously more upsetting because it's more real life events yeah. than yeah. what Reportage November was. It's just you know the ending is is what kind of ruins it, unfortunately. But um, but no, check it out if you're a big fan footage fan. It's on it's on to be in this Ghost of Hiroshima. Yep, definitely recommend. And this next one, Scotty. Mm-hmm. Oh See yeah, it? yeah, oh, it's yeah. time. All right. It's time, Scott. Let's bring in the Christmas cheer. All right, la, let la, me la, pres- la, 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 la. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck me. You want me to talk about it? Nope, I got it. All okay. right, so the next gem we're talking about is another wonderful Christmas time movie, and that is Nutcracker Massacre. Oh, fuck yeah, it is. A <laughs> uh, little tagline is, it won't be a silent night. Bum, it bum, will be because you'll fall asleep during this film. The synopsis is, following a novelist who visits her family for Christmas and finds a mysterious Nutcracker doll, which soon becomes possessed and wreaks havoc. Well, right off the bat, I went into this thinking, okay, so it's going to be a little tiny animated Nutcracker doll that's running around killing people, kind of like, you know, a killer doll, killer Chucky type thing. Oh, was I wrong? Oh, folks, was I fucking wrong? This is a full-size human 
height, tall, terribly costumed nutcracker with sharp. So there's teeth. one in my neighborhood that's a tall size nutcracker that I saw in someone's doorway. Looks just like this. Really? Yeah. So it's oh, obviously wow. a prop they sell, and then they obviously got a costume. And now Scott and I won't spoil it too much, but there's a gentleman in this movie that was also in Croc, and I recognize him because in that movie he wore his shirts that were very tight, so we could see his bulging biceps. And in this one, he did the exact. Oh, he had some fucking biceps. I think right. they just bring this guy in the movies as eye candy for anybody who wants to see him um, because he just walks in the room and he's like fucking busted is, out of his shirt. Is he the one using the walnut cracker? Yes. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. He was in croc with also a very tight shirt on. <laughs> it's like this guy just really likes to wear tight shirts or this is what like the directors keep putting in them. They're like, oh, fuck, dude, what do you bench? He's like, oh, I bench like I bench like fucking 250. I do my macros. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know. Look at your fucking body. And, Put on this hey, super tight shirt. <laughs> and hey, guys, guys, I know we're reco- I know we are uh, in the middle of making this film, but can we uh, can I get a day break? Because I need I cannot skip like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, and then, hey, this redhead, she's super smoking hot, too. Let's make them a couple. <laughs> and they'll show up and, together. <laughs> and let's make her treat him like fucking shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, the redhead is in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, oh. which I can't fucking wait for. That oh, and Cocaine God. Bears, oh, the God. fucking like, gems of 2023, man. Well, I was excited for Blood and Honey till you brought her up. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, no, she's not. in that shit. That's right. Fuck me. All right. I'm going to watch it and hate it, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. It's going to be bad. It's going to be shitty, but we're going to love every minute of it. Once again, with this movie, the movie was uh, very poorly acted, cut away from every bit of gore. <laughs> and, like it, it had. But you nothing. get to see lots of tight shirts and bad acting. Yeah, no boobs, though, which I was really disappointed because it's like, well, if you're going to be bad acting in a terrible B movie like this, at least some nudity. Give me and man ass. Have some random boobs. people showing up. It was like pro- that prom movie that I made Scott watch. The fucking yeah. prom. Oh, man, it was so bad. So bad. Like, Horrible. Give, I mean, like, you guys had, they had eye candy on screen for the men and the women. And, <laughs> like, you did nothing with them. And Honestly. Like this, Whatever, I got to see bulging man's biceps. I would have, I rather would, I would have rather seen him rip his pants off and show his bare ass. Like, give me something, <laughs> something exciting. But no, no he's gonna see tight white shirts, Scott, and him cracking nuts. Well, I mean, I guess we do get kind of a sort of glimpse of something in between his legs at one point. Oh, I guess so. That's true. That's true. We get a super <laughs> bitchy girlfriend. Honestly, who brings crowns for him and her to wear so they could order people around? It's so fucking ridiculous. And she he's like, he's a negative star. It's horrible. And she was telling him like while they're at breakfast or at dinner with the, her parents, and they're like, "Oh, would you like dessert?" No, he's not going to have any dessert. But I want dessert. No, you're not having dessert. It's like, wow. Yeah, she won't let him eat. Well, she doesn't want those biceps to go to waste, Scott. Right? God. Oh man, what if he gets fat and he can't wear those tight shirts anymore the way she? like oh man man. honestly i uh this isn't even available anywhere and thank fucking god i hope it never is do yourselves a favor (laughs) like honestly so nutcracker massacre is definitely a must watch for this year rob humphreys if you can find it clearly we praised it he's like oh man a guy in a tight shirt Mm, it's a girl under the age of 21 though because if not i'm not interested (laughs) (laughs) Rob has a small window. It's 19 to 21, and then they grow, and then he's not interested anymore. That's it. For fuck's sakes. (laughs) <laughs> all right scott so, you watched the next one i didn't see this one all right yeah this one is uh it finally showed up on letterbox so i could actually rate it and add it to my list but uh this one is another christmas gem called he knows and it's uh little christina watched sammy the elf kill her family oh, when he returns here. when he returns to punish the naughty in a small midwest town <laughs> she must save her daughter from the same fate um and when they say elf no, it's not like tiny little elf or anything. No, this is like a full grown guy in an elf costume, basically. And not like in Nutcracker where it's a guy in a Nutcracker costume, but you're supposed to believe it's a Nutcracker that's inanimate. This is actually just a killer wearing an elf outfit, basically. And uh, yeah, this one went out for is a free m 2 as well. And this is a, another one of those low budget slashers. And I think think i watched this right after killing tree and once again not bad like i it's a two and a half 
out of five like so it's you know right just it's there it's a movie that was made it wasn't defensive to the eyes it was just easy to watch and i mean it had some good kills and some funny characters the acting was not the greatest in in parts but i would say the main girl of christina she did well um but yeah i think it just has some pretty cool and gory kills for low budget and yeah i'd say it's just fun easy watch but nothing spectacular and where can people find this bad boy uh i found it on tubi and let's see and uh they do not since on on letterbox they don't even have a poster for this yet like so it's just a blank gray square that says he knows this is how advanced we are on the friday nightmares podcast yeah we do digging on tubi and this is what we find as far as i know that's the only place it's available because there is no other where to watch it yet well everyone tubi he knows christmas you know if unless you really want to watch the nutcracker in which case don't look for it ever Um, (laughs) right so the next one we're going to talk about is another found footage. It is called Project Sky Quake. It is a 72-minute runtime. Look up is the tagline. After strange trumpet likes, is it weird that I hear trumpets when you're turning me on, turning me on? <laughs> After the strange trumpet-like sounds in the sky have been reported at locations around the world, a wannabe journalist sets out to investigate with his best friend. But, yeah, that's supposed to be her best friend. Her best friend. But they soon find themselves facing an encounter with terrifying results. I'll be quick with this one. I liked it, and then I didn't. It got real fucking weird. I didn't get what was going on at the ending. It lost me. Liked the first half of it. If you're a found footage completist, I recommend it. Scotty? Yep. Um, yeah, I because uh, I, I remember I told you about this one. Brandon told us about this. He hadn't watched it yet, but was one that he was interested in. And usually when Brandon's interested in something, it's something unique that no one else has really seen or talked about. So I always want to yeah. like, give it a shot and watch it. And yeah, I was intrigued and very creeped out by a lot of what was happening in this film just because of the mystery of what was going on. And I'd say the first two acts, solid, very solid found footage, very creepy elements to it. And then some things happened that I just kind of questioned at the end that just kind of brought it down for me. Like, I still like, I still like this. It's definitely above average because it was an easy watch. It's only 72 minutes. It's found footage. Um, And I thought the acting was good. I thought like the sound design for like what is happening is good. Uh, the, the effects for low budget looked good um, and it had a very good, interesting mystery to it. It's just like how it, I'd say for me, I'd say the last 10 minutes didn't work for me. Yeah, that's where it went downhill for me too. But if you are a found footage completist, you can find this on Voodoo, Hoopla, Amazon, and To Be. Yep, that's where I watched it was Tubi. And then for uh, from here in America, it's Amazon Voodoo, Amazon Video, Hoopla, and Voodoo Free. Oh, Voodoo Free. There's a Voodoo Free. Look at that. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know they had Voodoo Free now. That's cool. All right. So the next one is mine. Yes, it is. Because you watch fucking 18 million movies. Hey, I do. I'm I'm carrying the show now. You, you are. Oh, please. Ca- I watched more movies than you did when you weren't watching. I, 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 you didn't let me finish. I was saying you carried oh. it for the first half of the year. Now it's my turn to carry it for us. Well, you're not carrying end. it. I'm doing I'm, my what I'm doing. You, work you, too. I took the load off your back and I am helping now. <laughs> you're just like, I will watch all the shitty films. <laughs> I will watch the shit and I will tell you if there's anything worthwhile. You do. I actually do wait for your opinion. <laughs> it's true. And, Hey, I mean, there's been some that have Unless been... Unless it's like a drop on Shutter, then even yeah. though there's been some lacking ones on that lately too. But anyway, well, sorry, I'll let you talk about this one. We're almost right. done, by the way, everybody. We're getting there. We're getting there. Calm your tits, people. I know. Um, so the next one is Masking Threshold. A 90-minute runtime, and it's uh, the synopsis is conducting a series of experiments in his makeshift home lab. A skeptic IT worker tries to cure his harrowing hearing impairment. But where will his research lead him? Masking Threshold combines a chamber play, a scientific procedural, an unpacking video, and a do-it-yourself YouTube channel while suggesting endless vistas of existential pain and decay. Glimpse the world of the nameless protagonist in this eldritch tale, which is by no means for the faint of heart. Hmm. That is a ve- like the whole uh, uh, combines chamber play, scientific procedural, and unpacking video and do-it-yourself YouTube channel. That is a very apt description, actually. Cause I was having a hard time thinking of how to describe this film. Cause it's, you never see this character's face. All you ever really see is his hands. Cause he is 
he is basically doing a science experiment trying to figure out like why he's hearing these noises that he's hearing it's like this weird like humming or it's like high pitched so he starts like experimenting while he's recorded it all and he's like squishing grapes and he's cutting like pieces of leaves and he's like hearing like these sounds of these things dying basically and he's just trying to figure out like what it is and what what noises are or what things create these noises and it's very fascinating though this could have been done more as an audio drama because mm. like you really mm. didn't need the visuals though the visuals do get a bit disturbing towards the end because okay. he goes a little bit further into it but it is basically just a lot of up close shots of like him crushing things or him like burning something or him mm. just doing something to this with it just and there's just not a lot to watch visually just besides these images on the screen and but no this guy's narrating it the entire time and he's very scientific about it. he's writing notes down for every little thing and it's i would say it's very fascinating and very unique um Wanted a little more, but I think that is like this because of the style it was done in. It just kind of was not able to do more. Yeah. But like it's gotten a lot of like love at like uh, film festivals and stuff like that. And yeah, I just found it very, a very fascinating story and like audio drama style. It was cool. very, very unique. Um, and where can you find this bad boy? Uh, just about to say uh, it's that. on iTunes, Vudu, Google Play Movies, Amazon Video and YouTube. It's nice. called Masking Threshold. Nice. Awesome. Uh, the most recent Shutter Drop, both Scotty and I have watched it. We sure and, have. And it is called A Wounded Fawn. Uh, it is a 91-minute runtime. A local museum curator who is dipping her toe back into the dating pool is targeted by a charming serial killer. When a fateful romantic getaway beca- between the two becomes a tense game of cat and mouth, both must confront the madness within him. Um, that's not really given a spoiler because you get pretty early on, you figure out he's not who he says he's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie is very, very interesting. It's, it's an interesting mix and Scotty don't give spoilers. I won't. Um, I <laughs> says the one that spoiled movies before too. I know, but I just, this would just drop. So we gotta be careful. <laughs> Um, this one is a mixture of an artistic film with, you know, maybe a relationship film. It's very, very interesting. Um, I think people will either love it or dislike it, depending on how they like how it goes. Uh, standout that's in it. We have our good friend, Josh Rubin, who was also in Scare Me. One of my favorite movies from that year. And Scare Me 2 is coming out. I'm not sure if you're aware. That's Scare Package 2. Oh, scare package too. Oh, never mind. Yeah, scare me was that one where it was just the two. I thought each other I stories. thought that he was coming out with scare Patrick's too because I think he's in that one. That's why I kind of checked and I thought oh, he was coming okay. out. Yeah. Um. But anyway, excellent actor. Glad to see him and stuff. Uh, everyone's actually quite a good actor in well, this. And I think you just brought her name up earlier, Sarah Lind. Sarah Lynn. Didn't you bring her up earlier? I don't think so. she was in Jacob's wife. She was in Cold Blood. No, I don't think so. Oh, I, th- I swore you did. No, she's great, though. She's really good. Yeah, she did really good. Um, and you know, if you got Shudder, it's worth a watch. You're not going to, you know, either way, like this will go either way for you. It is very hard to predict how someone will react to this film. Scotty liked it a little bit more than I did. I will say that. Um, but it's a solidly well-made film. Then a 90 minute, 91 minute runtime, you're not overstaying your welcome. Thank you for stay, staying just around an hour and a half mark fucking movie thank you for not yeah. dragging this shit out for two hours appreciate it um it's very hard to make a good horror movie two hours to be quite yeah. honest unless you're jordan peele adi aster um and a handful of others um movie, horror movies don't need to be two hours <laughs> right uh but no like my thoughts oh. on this I, this was a fucking wild ride holy shit yeah um i was glued to the screen the entire time uh this film goes one way and then kind of goes another way and you're just going what the fuck's going on and it's crazy and i read up a little bit on it and it seems to have to deal with greek mythology in a way and that's all i'll say but uh yeah the performance is all around i am really liking uh josh rubin a lot like he's uh, he was also in uh the werewolves within and like yeah he he like as soon as i seen him I'm like oh no shit this guy I, okay i'm in for something interesting then and yeah, yeah the performances all around really good the uh, special effects really good. It's very visually appealing, uh, but 
yeah, this film goes crazy. It's interesting. Um, I'm not going to say anything else, but I did really enjoy this. Like it, yeah, it went places. <laughs> it's a Shudder must watch. It, you know, if you're watching Shudder and you're like, there's some movies we skip over on Shudder, like or some movies I skip over and I'm like, that looks fucking boring. I'm not doing that. This is definitely not one you should skip over. This right. is definitely one you should watch. Um, so it's available on the Shutter, uh, Canada Shutter, American Shutter, obviously because both Scott and I just watched it. Um, so if you have the Shutter, check it out. I agree. Okay. And then I guess the next one's mine. Did you watch this? Not yet. This is gonna be one I'll probably watch this weekend. So very few things scare me like this scared me. Really? Yeah. It was disturbing. Wow. One of the scariest movies I watched out of all the ones we watched. Now, is this a movie or a documentary? It's a documentary, but okay. it's the scariest movie in the sense of it being a film that I watched in this grouping. Because that is why I actually didn't watch it at first, because I seen the title. I'm going, oh, God, this is oh, no. a dumb movie. It's a really good fucking scary documentary. Okay. Um, so this is called The Curse of Robert the Doll. There's been cheesy movies made about this. Well, that's Robert what I was the thinking Doll, it was. But this is a documentary on him. It is an 81 minute runtime. Considered the most haunted doll in the world, Robert the Doll lives behind Glass Museum in Key West, Florida, where every th- where every year thousands of visitors who fail to follow his rules find themselves cursed. Victims have experienced injury, illness, accidents, even death. But what makes Robert curse his victims? What evil entity lives inside this doll? The latest Shock Doc installment explores the true origins of Robert the doll, uncovers the story of this doll's first owners in 1905, and seeks to find out basically why is this doll so nefarious. This is a fucking disturbing film. Nice. Um, this Robert is kept at a museum in Key West. I was at Key West at one time. I went on a cruise and we stopped in Key West. Um, I'm super glad I didn't go to the museum where this doll is kept. Wow. Um, it's even you, Scotty, I think will be rattled by this. All right. Yeah. I think I might know what I'm watching tonight. Right. I'm more likely to believe in supernatural stuff than Scotty is. Um, not that Scotty doesn't. I just think I'm more likely to. I've been on, I've been in fucking catacombs. I'm not trying to bring this up again in Ireland with fucking dead bodies. That scared me less than this documentary. Wow. <laughs> like I actually looked up of, do you have to follow Robert's rules if you just see his picture on a screen? Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. It's a very, very, very good documentary. Nice. This will probably win documentary of the year for me. It is that good. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, and I know we don't put documentaries on our top 10, but maybe this will get an, op- an honorary mention from me. Like it's very few things have disturbed me as much as this did. Um, it is available on Google prime plex YouTube. Um, so prime video, if you have Amazon prime uh, and then Amazon it's, it's worth whatever fucking rental. Like this movie is, if you have a thing about haunted dolls, you'll also see where like, you know, the movie, um, what was the one that came out with the one with the rules and then the boy? Oh, yeah. Um, you'll see where kind of the boy kind of ripped some stuff off of. He ripped it off of Robert the doll. Okay. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Interesting. Uh, but Robert Doug's real. And I don't even know if I would go visit Robert the doll. Hmm. Okay. I am going to have to yeah. check this out. So check it out. And everyone listening, this is a, to me a must watch for a horror fan. It is very fascinating. Nice. Where is this available? Uh, so Google, Prime Video, Plex, YouTube, and Amazon. Nice. All right, so I think the next two are just me. They're just you. All right, so these are the last two of the 2022 films we watched. Uh, So this one is Jack Frost from 2022. No, not the Michael Keaton Jack Frost. No, not the killer snowman Jack Frost, but a new Jack Frost. Uh, Once again, another 2v1. Once again, another Christmassy horror film. Yep, I am just kind of like, like I say, I'm not decorating for Christmas right now, but I sure am getting in the spirit by watching these terrible movies. Why not? (laughs) Uh, this one is, uh, the synopsis is, uh, actually tagline, meet the next stone cold killer. Uh, the synopsis is a supernatural creature will stop at nothing in order to turn a family's whole world upside down with his icy mayhem. Um, yeah, this is, uh, basically about an ice demon that, uh, comes around on Christmas and seems to like be attracted to this specific family and anyone that gets in his way he basically kills and once again not bad uh 
I think Elves has taught me that, you know, these other movies can actually be like somewhat entertaining. <laughs> and uh, like, I give this a 5.5. I don't remember a lot from it. I do remember like the costume design is like the mask that he's wearing, like the, the, the actor's wearing could have used a little more motion to it. Cause uh, like when he talks, you can barely see his lips move on it. So I like, I think that's just makeup effects not working properly, which can happen. Um, but it's low budget. The acting isn't, isn't awful it's tolerable and the kill like the movie itself is just fairly entertaining like it's nothing i would say go out and watch but if you're a sucker for bad christmas movies like i am check it out but it's uh, available on tubi uh where else is it tubi and amazon voodoo and amazon video nice and then i will bring up the synopsis for the next one all right so this one i saved for last because this is probably the best one of the bunch that i had watched in the last three weeks uh so my buddy justin he was very kind and took me to go see Bones and All. Cause on I had, a date? He, yeah, we were dating. It was great. Mm. <laughs> I know Phil Ray will be jealous. Oh, he man. Wants to, fuck. Mm, Phil. I know, because he, be, he wants to be between both of us and rub both of our balls. Oh, heads. fuck. I would. Oh, no, not me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got excited there. <laughs> I was like, mm, I'll take Phil. <laughs> yeah, I will. Anyway. But, uh. But uh, the movie I'm talking about is uh, we went to the theater and the movie I'm talking about is Bones and All, directed by Luca Guadagnino or Guadagnino, the director of the Suspiria remake from 2018. Uh, it's 131 minute runtime. Abandoned by abandoned by her father, a young woman named Marin embarks on a thousand mile odyssey through the back roads of America where she meets Lee, a disenfranchised drifter. But despite their best efforts, all roads lead back to their terrifying past and to a final stand that will determine whether their love can survive their otherness. Uh, this, all, this stars Taylor Russell and Timothy Chalamet. And holy shit. The performances between these two is fucking superb. Like you, the chemistry between them on screen is absolutely amazing. Like you are, you feel for these characters quite a bit, like and what they're going through and what they're learning about each other and about their past. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful film. Well shot, well, just well acted all around. It's more a drama romance road trip film with a splash of horror. It's not like a straight up horror film, but this has like horror elements because of what what the two characters are and they find others like them throughout the world, but they seem to be the only ones that aren't really that crazy. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this is probably one of the surprises of the year for me because I didn't see I seen one trailer and I was like, oh, this looks like it could be interesting. And when I got out of the theater, I was just head over heels in love with it. This Aww. is definitely a top 10 film for me. It hit me Ooh. in the feels. This this hit me in the feels. It is definitely going to be in my uh, in competition for the relationship award that we give out. Like, because the relationship between these two is just fucking beautiful. And yeah, this is just a very heart wrenching, just drama horror film that just works on all cylinders. It is absolutely incredible. I highly, rec I highly recommend this. And if it's still in theaters, go to the theater, watch it. It is totally worth it. That's Coolio. It's Coolio. Um, so it's a theater's watch right now, right? Yep. Okay. Well, that concludes our 2022s for this evening. For older watches, we each have one. Mine's a, mine's a 2006 gem. This shit's called Stay Alive. I had to watch it for the other mm -hmm. podcast mm -hmm. I'm Stay on. Stay Alive. It was Stay fucking alive. hilarious. So... If you have a guilty pleasure for cheesy 2000 films with teenagers, Stay Alive is for you. This movie's, this movie's based on a video game, mm -hmm. 17th century vampire, or no, 17th century vampire Elizabeth Bathory, who, by the way, did not live in the United States, but somehow they moved her over to the United States. Oh, Jesus Christ. Who fucking cares? Really? It's a movie. Um, oh, wow. And you play the game. And it looks very much like video games from that time period. Like, hmm. you know what I mean? And then you die in the game, you die in person. And it and you don't die right away. You die like similarly to the game. Like one guy gets run over by a carriage and then like in the game and then he gets run over by a carriage in real life. Like a carriage ah. just goes up on a street and runs him over. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, some of the actors in this include... Uh, Frankie, Frankie Mu Muniz from Muniz. Malcolm in the Middle. Sophie Bush uh jimmy simpson who basically tries to be like the kind of like stifler character um 
Oh, fuck, he's so funny. Like, he's in uh, Studio 666, Vampire Hunters, Loser. With Like, he was in, like, those films when, like, we were teenagers, right? Like, this is just such a fucking... Adam Goldberg is in it. Like, it's just... Anyway, it's fucking hilarious. This movie's cheesy beyond shit, but it was a fun fucking time. So... If you have a guilty pleasure for fucking 2000 movies like I do, and you just like watching teenagers be dumb for an hour and a half and the whole video game shit, this is entertaining enough. It's called Stay Alive 2006. I had always been curious about it. I knew it wasn't going to be a good movie. Well, um... we have access to it on that Good Friends Plex. So, okay, sweet. I'll check it out. If you want to watch it, it's fucking fun, Scott. Honestly, it's fucking funny and hilarious. Nice. I will definitely check that out then. Yeah, man. And then uh, I guess I'll bring in the older watch I ended up sitting down to check out. <clears throat> uh, Shutter decided to bring this up from the 80s, and that is uh, Evil Dead Trap from 1988, directed by Toshiharu Ikeda. And it's 102 minute runtime. A talk show hostess takes a camera crew out to an abandoned factory to investigate a reported snuff film that was made there. As she gets closer to the truth, she and her friends are subjected to a brutal nightmare. Yeah, that pretty much sums that shit up. Holy crap. This movie was fucking insane. This is balls to the wall crazy like a lot of the Japanese films from the 80s seem to be just like crazy. It's not like your Ringu Grud or Juan or anything like that style ghost story. Now, this took definite inspiration. A lot of inspiration from Italian filmmaking has a lot of like up close shots of eyes, eye trauma that would uh, make Lucio Falci be uh, make Lucio Falci proud. Um, there is a uh, what is it? Uh, the music is very Italian sounding, so I was like loving that. Like it's super gory. Uh, it's you you're saying to yourself, "What the fuck is going on?" Multiple times because shit just gets crazy in this film and. It's definitely inspired, hence the name Evil Dead Trap, by Evil Dead. Nice. A lot of the camera work is done Evil Dead style with the whole zoom and run around camera. Nice. And nice. Yeah, it's fucking violent. It's crazy. Uh, plenty of nudity. Uh, I think man and woman nudity. Um, and yeah, just the gore in this is just awesome. This film was such a pleasure to watch. I had such a fucking blast with this. That's awesome. And so you recommend it on the Shuddy? Yeah, if you have not seen this, fucking watch it. It is fucking great. I had so much fun. And I believe, I'm not 100% accurate, but I believe there are sequels to it. And if so, I need to find those. Yep, there are. Evil Dead. There's Evil Dead Trap 2, Hideki. Okay, so I'll have to look for that one as well. That's awesome. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, do you want to do a break? Or do we should we just keep going? Uh, let's take a quick break because I got Dexter over here pacing back and forth. All right. So luckily for you guys, you still get to hear from one of our Legion podcast friends. So after these messages, we'll be right back. Cha-cha. This is a test of the emergency podcasting system. Listen to the Psychosemantic Podcast. Politics, movies, and political movies. Find us on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, LegionPodcasts.com, The Psychosemantic Podcast. Welcome back. Uh, previously, we would go into a movie review at this segment, but what we will be doing instead is going over what's new. And we will also be going over our out of the dark topic. So for what's new, uh, I just had something simple to bring to the table. I kind of floated back and forth, but I decided to keep a Netflix series for our out of the dark topic to talk about. Um, instead, I watched a movie last night called 13 Minutes. And it's not a horror film, but was it, the reason... Was it 13 minutes long? <laughs> no, sums up my, my sex drive. No, that's not true. Actually, yeah, no, I, can get, I can get myself done in two, but like 13 is a good time. No one wants shit. to fuck for like two, 30. Two, that's amateur. Give me fucking <laughs> 0.5 seconds. I'm done. Like, <laughs> like I've already went 10 times already while we just had this conversation. <laughs> oh, man, wouldn't that be awesome? I'm exhausted. Yeah, that'd be fucking amazing. Um, Yeah, like I love orgasming. That's the fucking best part of my life. <laughs> it really is. Like, I, I had this conversation with a buddy of mine. He's like, oh, you know, these women say chocolate's the best. I'm like, those women have never come. Because let me <laughs> tell you, 
any woman that tells me chocolate is better than an orgasm needs to get themselves a vibrator or needs to be telling their man or partner or whoever it is that they're sexually involved with some things because nothing's better than that feeling anyway back to the movie 13 minutes <laughs> uh, which is about tornadoes which is the complete opposite of coming um they're going though <laughs> oh, they're going oh, they're going all right so this is a movie i threw on last night george was watching tv with me and like him and i can never decide on a film together it's like when ann and i try to watch a movie or fuck anyone besides you and i we're trying to watch a movie together we can never decide on something so we were chilling and i was like ah we got crave which is the new like canadian hbo it has all the hbo shit and stuff on it and i was like oh here's this movie about tornadoes it's you know i don't know let's watch it let's see the special effects of the tornadoes so it's a very interesting film because it it's very similar to soft and quiet in the dialogue really yeah thorna birch is in this oh, wow. um and she has a real hard line conversation with her pregnant like pre-adult daughter she's like 19 and pregnant and like has a real honest conversation it talks about abortion there's some real pro-life people in this and then there's people that are pro-choice um and thorna birch delivers a really fucking powerful monologue about yeah people say it's pro pro-life when it's inside of you but the moment it's out in the world it's a burden mm-hmm. like it's it went places one kid comes out as gay to his parents and his parents disown him before the tornado hits like it's like wow and they don't kiss and make up after the tornado leaves damn yeah like it, it there's a deportion issues with illegal immigrants and then there's discussion about exploiting them for their labor like it doesn't fucking hold back um but the reason why i brought it up was because it shows real footage from destructions of tornadoes and it is fucking terrifying Mm -hmm. like i knew destruction was bad from tornadoes like you know that but people's houses are torn apart like torn apart and flattened it, it looks like a bomb went off yeah and it literally the reason why they call it 13 minutes is because they can only give people about a 13 minute warning time before the tornado's right above you makes sense right so you have very very little time to prepare and i just thought it really reflected some horrors in society it didn't make a happy sunshiny ending and it really reflected the horror and the tragedy of these fucking like real life horror um it was an interesting film it's an hour and 30 minutes it's on crave so i assume it's on hbo or stars in the states um yeah it was just i don't know it was really humbling for me to just see that kind of destruction and as a horror fan you know we get into horror movies and like it's all fun and games and it's all make-believe and you know and then you see something like that and that's probably why Robert the Doll fucked me up so much because it was it's relevant it's real and there's these people talking about their experiences that they've had and you know yeah it was it gave me a real retrospective for people like someone like lance who lives in texas thinking of you fucking lance oh my god i don't know if you get tornadoes in texas um i'm not familiar enough but like this was disturbing to watch um and even though it's a it's a re it's obviously a movie they're showing real footage from tornado damage it was really upsetting so yeah actually that kind of reminds me like during the summer our town of ours up north called gaylord they uh got hit by a nasty ass tornado like and it's sad because uh like they had tornado watches going on and then out of nowhere it turned into a full-blown tornado and they didn't i think they were only able to give like a one or two minute warning before it actually struck because the weather pattern was the weather pattern was so hard to like figure out that yeah it just kind of came out of nowhere and left this path of devastation I think everyone was able to make it out safe or at least survived. But uh, when we went up north uh, during the summer, we stopped for gas and the closest town was Gaylord. And it was like a week after that happened. And we're kind of like, well, since we're out here, let's just kind of see like what happened. And oh, my God, like there's like warehouses that are just like half standing. The other half's just gone. And it's just like debris everywhere. Like, like it's this, crazy and, and it's like a week later and they're still like cleaning up oh the yeah roads. they cleaned up for days and like with this stuff it's cleaned up for months and yeah. here's the real fucking real 
USA moment that comes out as the Red Cross is there and, you know, people are setting up for the ambulance ride. You're filling out a form of what insurance coverage you have. And let me tell you right now, that fucking shit doesn't happen here. I was in a car accident a couple weeks ago. I was fine, but my car got written off. If I had needed an ambulance, which by the way, you're not billed if you actually need an ambulance in a situation like that. Yeah. That's the only thing we can sometimes be billed for is an ambulance, but I would go to the hospital and be fucking treated. I wouldn't have to worry about not only my car, but whether I had fucking coverage to save my life. Like yeah, well, I mean, am, in situations like that, they may not have coverage, but they'll, still treat, like, you. they'll still treat you, but then but you, you are go in into debt. debt. Yeah. To like, that was even more horror. And yeah. you know, the couple that were there, the, whether it was an illegal immigrant and his wife was legal, they just managed to scrape enough to gather money for a house has to sell their house now and move back to Mexico. Like mm-hmm. I'm talking, this movie was fucking real. Um, and I, I didn't expect that from this film and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to mention it because I think the devastation and not being afraid to talk about real life issues was really cool. So, yeah, that's very fascinating actually. Yeah. I'll have to look for that one. Um, and I ended up deciding to, uh, I was going to bring up a podcast, but so far I've only listened to one episode of it. So I think I'm going to save that for next week when I get a few more episodes in and get to know the hosts a little better. But uh, so what I decided to bring for what's new is I've talked about them before plenty of times on the video gaming podcast and uh, a couple of times on our show, uh, Neebs Gaming, the YouTube channel that I like obsessively watch. It's like my comfort, comfort show. And they're like my friends like that I've never talked to or met in real life. But, you know, kind of like how. No, but they feel like you're friends. Yeah, because you're just kind of along with them on an adventure whenever they do stuff. Well, they started a new game series because they've they pretty much go through seasons of different like video games they'll play. And then when they decide that they're done with this game, they'll hurry up and beat it and move on to something else. And so they decided to start one called green hell. And this is one of those survival games where you are drop. You are basically waking up in the middle of the Amazon rainforest with nothing on you to survive. And you have to pretty much survive by like survive the elements survive Mm -hmm. nature you have to survive it all and like you're literally making bandages out of uh banana leaf uh, banana leaves from the banana plants um you're having to like scrounge up food and you got to keep an eye on your uh carbohydrates you got to keep an eye on your protein you got to keep a high on your water you got to keep an eye on your fats so you got to find different foods while you're wandering around trying to survive like and just you know eat the right thing you could eat a poisonous mushroom and now you have an infection that you have to find a way to cure yourself of you can get like parasites you if you get wounded and you don't clean the wound fast enough you'll get maggots that'll start festering and you have to get rid of them and heal yourself so it's like true hardcore survival. Uh, on top of that, you're dealing with like predatory animals that are in this, like so jungle cats and fucking wild boars. And cougars, and, rawr. Yeah, cougars, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I show up in the video game. <laughs> um, but not only do they have to deal with that, they also have to deal with the indigenous tribes that are out there that are instantly threatened by your arrival and will kill you. They're not, it's not referenced if they are like a video game form of cannibalistic tribes or if they are just like regular indigenous tribes, but they are instantly threatened by you and will like hunt you down and try to kill you. So you got all, so you got all the regular survival shit. Then you got all this other, like, I got to fight for my survival as well. And, you know, it's uh, Neebs, Apsaro, and Simon playing this game together. And they are constantly bickering back and forth, trying to like, you know, work together, but getting frustrated with each other. And, Like they're playing it on the hardest difficulty mode. So it's quite entertaining. And there is even a sanity meter, sanity meter in the game. So like if you go too long without sleep or if you uh, eat the wrong things, you'll start kind of going crazy. Like if you start, if you eat something like a, uh, like you eat, you decide you're going to eat a maggot because you need just something to eat. Your sanity is going to go, your insanity meter is going to go up because that's not normal. You're not, you shouldn't be in that type of stuff. Well, apps (laughs) row. This just seems fitting for his character, like in every one of his games, because he's always the crazy ass. Uh, kills a tribe member that was trying to kill them, 
and he's like, I'm fucking starving. And he sees the body and he starts hacking it up and he's going, oh my God, they have meat on them. I am going to cook this meat and eat it. And he starts eating it and becomes a cannibal, basically. He starts eating it and now he's starting to hear voices and seeing shit because he's completely insane from eating the meat. <laughs> and this he's just... Intense, Scott. Oh, it's hilarious and like the way they play it. It's hilarious. But yeah, this game is like fucking crazy and intense. I really want to buy it, but I'm going, man, this shit would be fucking freaky as hell how much is the game i looked it up earlier and i think it was 24.99 on steam right now hmm. that's not bad but, yeah and it's it's hardcore though it's like if you're a fan of like arc uh the raft um seven days to die those type of survival games i guess this is a higher tier difficulty of like survival because you're like actually having to focus on a lot of this real life shit of surviving it's a battle like survivor and, of destiny's child yeah <laughs> but it's uh Yep, done by the YouTube channel group uh, Neebs Gaming. They are fucking hilarious. Like they do They're all your their boys. Shows. They are. I love watching them, and they all their shows are completely unscripted. So they're just kind of winging it and talking and doing shit themselves, and they just edit it down to make it like a good half hour episode and they'll really who knows how many episodes they'll do of this but like they could go from 10 episodes to 40 episodes just all how depends. many followers do they have are they like a big channel yeah uh, they got 2.31 million wow yeah they, and it's cool because they started off doing animation did a show called Duralius and friends and it was like this little internet cartoon like short video cartoon and that's how they that's how they wanted to get into this was to do animation. Well, while they were like on breaks from animation, they decided to do like live streams of video games and just like kind of portray their own personalities as video game characters. And people really like started hooking to that. So like they got a lot of views. So they're like, well, fuck it. Let's continue doing this with video games, build our following, and then we'll still have like free time in between to do our animation stuff too. And we'll have more followers that will probably be interested in watching. And that's how they've created the channel they do. And they have a large following. And, like, they do live streams every Thursday that uh, when you donate to them, they're donating the money to charities. Oh. Yeah, that's really cool. Like, uh, uh, one, of the, one of their main members, Thick, he's going through uh, brain cancer treatments. And he fought it off and was doing well. And then it came back. So he's been, he went back through surgery. And now he's on, like, a hiatus from doing any of the stuff on the show but they've been doing a lot of uh live streams on thursday nights to get money to donate to brain cancer treatments is he american of course unfortunately huh. you mean his treatment you guys are all donating so he can pay for his, to be alive pretty much yeah like when uh like yeah and every one of them are like midwesterners so they're like uh north carolina south carolina like think uh minnesota so like all in that vicinity wow well it sounds like a really good youtube channel that you're watching my friend oh it is there it's pure entertainment it's silly it's dumb they bicker like their best friends but they bicker like their family at the same time so it's like kind of like how when you sometimes hear a podcast and the hosts start bickering back and forth and you're like us yeah well we bicker back and forth jokingly but you know there are some people that get heated on their shows and you're just like this is kind of awkward but it's kind of entertaining to watch or listen and that's kind of how it is with them (laughs) you know i've been watching this youtube channel i should have brought it up it's about a guy that covers amusement park deaths oh wow yeah and it's about like malfunctioning rides and shit like that and six flags man they've had some they've had some drama around us same with walt disney just keep it under the rug no shit sweep, okay. sweep, sweep. yeah wow. so people don't know about it yeah it's really been interesting anyway i'll talk about that next time in more detail yeah please do yeah but um so that's what's what's new for scotty and i uh and then our last segment because we lost our middle segment now is out of the dark and we're going to do just a little overview of the year in review of the following streaming service so scott me scotty let me know if i forgot one shutter Mm -hmm. netflix Mm -hmm. hulu Mm -hmm. and uh prime right and tubi tubi and tubi um so i don't know do you want to talk about shutter first yeah i say like uh because 2022 has been like we started off like this year just kind of like and it's not that great of a year and it's kind of it's obviously really picked up like it always does during the last half but um i think out of all the streaming services shutter and one other have really put out a lot of content to gather up for 2022 of new watches and i think i think shutter has the strongest lineup of all the films that they've released yeah and they have the best variety yeah and i really think like yeah because you get and you because you get the low budget you get the high budget and you get a lot of like foreign films on there and a lot of unique stories and like more of the more hyper violent movies too because like i think the other places are a little more skeptical on like the hardcore violent stuff 
and Shutter obviously thrives on that stuff. Well, it was Shutter you're paying a subscription, and it's for horror fans, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're you're buying a Shutter subscription or paying to it because you want to see a variety of different horror films. Yeah, right. Um, you know, <clears throat> they live in the gray was one of the first ones that came out. Yes, Shutter that I think a lot of people skipped over. Unfortunately, I did um, until this week, and I really liked it. I'm glad you liked it. Um, the last thing Mary saw was a big thing. Slap Face came out earlier this year on Shutter as well. Um, a Banquet, which is all very, very different. There's one that I wanted to get to specifically and mention that came out on Shutter. It was the one about the family um, in the van. Not the van. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The family, the Dutch and Swedish family. Oh, or whatever uh, it was. Speak, speak no evil. Speak no evil. Um, that was excellent. That came out this year. The Watcher or just Watcher came out. Deadstream came out. But then it also had some duds. Uh, the Cellar it was not yeah. really the best film that came out on that this year. Um, the Twin. Blah. The Twin. It was, it was blah. I mean, what, um, like none of these were really awful. They were just very middle of the road mediocre. I couldn't get through. Don't you worry, sweetie. Or don't oh, that worry, one sweetie. I still that one I still have not seen. Um, and Satan Slaves was okay. And Glorious. Glorious really stood out there. Hellraiser. Uh, Hellraiser uh, was Hulu. I'm sorry. My bad. And uh, The Sadness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, who invited mm-hmm, them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we who also, invited them was excellent. Yeah, it was. And uh, we also had the documentary, The Found Footage Phenomenon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was a really good documentary. So Shudder, I feel, does very well at picking up North American films. Yes. I feel it shifts through and it tends to get some really solid North American films. Occasionally good international. Yeah. But I would not go to Shutter as a number one pick for international films. There's actually another service provider that I think does a much better job with international films. Um, but when I look at the lineup for Shutter this year, the things that stand out to me are they live in the gray, um, Watcher and Glorious. Yep. Sissy, I thought was really entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm forgetting anything else. Um, let's see. For me, I'll, I'll just kind of listen, see if there's any that remind like that ring a bell for you. Uh, Revealer, um, who invited them? Glorious, the sadness. Uh, what else? Um, Deadstream for sure really stood out for me. That's one of the better ones this year, I think. And yeah, that was a really good low budget one that Shutter picked up. They live in the gray and a wounded fawn. I also put in there that like because these are all yeah. must sees. And I even like we even have to give them credit because like they don't do this often, but they do pick up like very uh, low budget indie films. And they picked up So Vam, the uh, one yeah. that was like done by a sixteen year old, and it was not a great film. But they give films like that a chance too. Like not not as often yeah. as some not as often as one of our other services, but they do spotlight some low budget indie stuff every so often. Yeah, they also did a movie like She Will, you know, which is so it's a British film. Oh yeah. That's an international film. And like that's what I'm talking about with their duds or the twin yeah. with their duds, right? And I wonder how they how they decide to pick what's gonna go on shutter. Like, wouldn't it be really cool? I wish a podcast, not us, because we're not gonna do it, but Rob Humphreys, why don't you get on your podcast slash your radio an interview with the person or the people or how the process goes to, for movies to be put on Shutter? Um, do they go to film festivals? Do people approach them? Do like how do they find out what to put on Shutter? Because Shutter is truly curated to just horror movies mm-hmm. and documentary series and and all that other stuff. And I'd be interested to hear what that process looks like. Yeah, 100%. Right? So I think this was a decent year for Shudder. I think it was fairly strong. Um, I will tell you what I think the weakest year was. I kind of want to jump to the worst of the pile. I think Netflix fucking dropped the ball this year. Um, Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I feel like all they put out now is TV series, and that's their thing. And maybe that's what people like. So, you know, who am I to fucking judge? That's what you like. That's what you like. Uh, But without the exception of old people, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Desperate Hour, um, and The Cabinet of Curiosities, which was an excellent miniseries, anthology series with eight short movies. I did watch all of them. Like any anthology, you're going to have ones you like more than the other. Oh, of course. Um, The one that I found was the creepiest was the final one. Oh, okay. Um, And, but really, like, I found Netflix... 
especially what I expected for them for international old people was the best thing to come out on Netflix for me this year. Yeah, I agree. Like, cause yeah, like every year before this, we were all about the international on Netflix this year. They just seem to not have much. Like, like it's- and they got shit like Wednesday and don't get me wrong. <clears throat> I, I think that's great that we're all excited that the Adam family has a fucking series now. Don't get me wrong. That's fine. I just wanted to see more international horror on Netflix because they pick up some really, really fucking good movies. Yeah. Um, you know, last year when I think about All My Friends Are Dead, um, the one with the husband and wife where they go away, it's a, what's it called? Oh, uh, like The Weekend or something like that? The Trip. The Trip. Like, and then also the one with the phone, with the kid with the zombies, and he's in this apartment and they did the remake oh, yeah, a of lot, it. Hashtag, hashtag alive. alive. Hashtag alive. Like, fucking solid solid films solid international films and we just didn't see that this year on netflix we really no. just didn't and uh like one that i was kind of surprised by like going to like i guess we'll go to the next streaming service but uh, i was kind of surprised by hulu because hulu hasn't really done a lot of like original content or picked up a lot of stuff but this year they did they had prey the predator the predator sequel yeah, or prequel or what you want to call that yeah. Fresh, really good. Very um, good. Hellraiser, excellent. Yeah. Uh, no Exit, another great one. Excellent. Another really good film. Yeah. Um, Matriarch, another, another great solid one. film. Yeah. Hulu's one... kind of taking the place of Netflix in terms yeah. of an alternative for horror movies. Yeah. And one that you liked that I didn't, but uh, Grim Cuddy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dash Cam, which I was not the biggest fan of, but it's there. Like um... Hatch. Hatch is on Hulu, according to. Uh, Oh shit! Online. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they yeah like Hulu didn't have many duds that I watched this year. Like, and they had more like original content, or at least picked up the rights to some of these films. Like, and it's obviously for people a lot of that are not in the U.S. It's Disney Plus that runs the stuff, which still baffles my mind that fucking Hellraiser is Disney Plus and shit like that. But yeah, well, Disney yeah, like, owns everything. I was very impressed by like just what they have released on like like their projects like because it started off with no exit and no exit was great and then yeah fresh. no exit it was a great movie actually and then sorry it's the hatchley not the hatch but fuck that was a great movie too. yeah yeah that yeah right? those excellent films and yeah excellent i'll say prime is where i haven't watched a lot this year i prime. can barely think so it, prime for rent i tried to look like i had to try to look it up um, I don't even know what's for free on Prime. I I can see for rent there's men, orphan first kill, which was entertaining. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing much that was released on Prime right. this year. Yeah, I'm going through my list. Let's see. Uh thought I had a prime category that I saved, I guess. Oh, my not. best friend's exorcism. Yep, and for me, good night, mommy. Um, remake. Father okay, yeah, of, it was on there too. I said I had Good Night Mommy on there too. Father of Flies was on Prime. Okay. I think that was just one they picked up. I don't think that's one that was produced by Amazon. Um, but yeah, they're re- this year just it seems like there's a lot of like the really, really, really low budget, just not good stuff that we don't normally we don't normally bother watching on there. Yeah, like that's the thing, right? Is that we're not seeing the stuff that we would have seen other years on Prime, where you pick up those low budget gems or something else. Prime really didn't deliver this year. I think Tubi was the next one, you know, if we're if we're honest here, of what had some really good options that you could find. And where Tubi's winning, it is found footage. And it's probably because people can put their found footage films up on Tubi. Yeah, like and they're all all indie projects. Like yeah. almost everything Tubi's got on there is like for the 2022 is indie projects, not really many big name, big budget things. And yeah, there is a lot of not so good stuff on 2B2 because they pick up and release everything, but for a free streaming service, they fucking killed it. And then, like you said, in the found footage area, and then they also started doing their own 2B originals. Now, yeah. none of them are great. We're gonna yeah, go but home. they're on par with on Uncorked. Yeah. You know, and like, honestly, if, if you're getting a shot with that's what you get the shot with, then that's what you get the shot with, right? Yeah. Like. I think that, you know, when I look at streaming services, because there's more, like I was looking at Paramount Plus as a streaming service, which had significant other on there as one of their movies. So Paramount released that and Smile. Yeah, but I think think that Orphan one is on there too. I think that's where that came from. Right. So like you have 
Paramount coming into the game. And I just, I find that Netflix has moved to series is now that's what they do. And fucking documentaries. Like how many serial killers, like I like serial killer shit too, but like how many documentaries do we need on Ted Bundy? Right. Like, oh my God. Dahmer, like, do we not fucking get what he did already? Like, I don't understand. Um, that's fine. That's my preference. Obviously, they're popular because Netflix keeps putting them on there. People are watching them. So it's just my yeah. opinion, you know, and that's fine. Not everyone has to like what yeah, I like. Because you, you and I aren't uh, big into TV series. No, like we're that. not. No. Like, like if, we, we may I've, watch them at some point, but we're not going to rush out to watch them when they drop. Like, I pushed myself to finish Cabin of Curiosities because I was like, well, this is on Netflix. And it's like, this is like one of the few fucking good things on Netflix. So I'm going to try to get through this. Um, but yeah, I was not very impressed with Netflix this year when it came to horror. Uh, Shutter always delivers. And then I think you're right. Hulu has really stepped up their game. And then Tubi, honestly. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Like I- I honestly think the winner here, like if I was going to choose a winner of all the streaming services, is tied between Shudder and Tubi, just depending on what you want. Oh, really? You don't think Hulu? Uh, Hulu is, I would say, but like there's more variety on Shudder and Tubi. Hulu doesn't have a large, like caliber library. Like, I mean, they have a lot of older, awesome films on there, but yeah, for newer releases, they don't have nearly as much as like Shudder or Tubi would. But I know Hulu is definitely coming into their own, but no, I think it's tied for me with Shutter and Tubi just because, yeah, Tubi may not have a lot of like eights or nines out of tens, but they have a lot of sevens, seven out of tens, and like a lot of just very interesting films and giving independent filmmakers a chance. Because I mean, fuck, Day of Disappearance. Yeah. That movie yeah. was absolutely incredible. I love that film. Yeah, totally. And I think that also streaming now people can go back to the theaters and next time we'll talk about theaters and on demand and, you know, what, what we thought of that this year. Um, But I think that, you know, in the, in the streaming era of competition and, you know, as a horror fan, and I say this very clearly as a horror fan, I still think the best bang for your buck for purchase is Shudder. Yeah. Um, I I regret now I've used Shudder through other people's means. I now have an account of my own. And, you know, over the last couple of years, I've really grown to appreciate the variety that's on Shudder. I know that I can always watch horror movies. And like, I'll be real, majority of the things I watch are horror movies. Yeah. Um, I don't watch romantic comedies. I like some dramas, not a big fan of fantasy, like some sci-fi if it's more horror based. I just really like horror movies and I like wrestling and I like sports and that's what I like to watch. And I like to watch the news. I don't watch a lot of other things like TV series and stuff like that. It's just not for me. So Shudder is something reliable that I know I can go to and I can find movies that I like. Uh, Hulu has been the second, even though we don't have Hulu here, it's Disney plus. I do think they've been reliable with getting quality films. And I do agree that Tubi is great all around. Tubi is an easy app to access. You can use it anywhere. Um, yeah, you got to watch some commercials. It's not the end of the world. It's like watching TV. Yeah. And I, I was going to say, and their commercials are not intrusive and come in like right at a good time each time they don't come in a weird spot they always like seem to like yeah they come, come in, in there's regularly. a lull in the movie right where it may make sense to have a commercial break yep. but and netflix man honestly if it wasn't for other people in my life using it and us sharing the account uh yeah i don't think i would care whether it would disappear tomorrow right same right and i did forget uh i feel foolish for forgetting this one for amazon prime midnight oh that yes, was midnight beautiful yeah, movie like that's the one good thing they had this year like yeah. let's be realistic here like it's like old people on fucking netflix like yes texas chainsaw massacre was entertaining but old people was the better film and it's the one better like the, the list is so small when we do our netflix awards there's literally three movies yeah like because yeah, like well, the, cri- the, cri- the curse of bridge hollow is on mine too but like i don't think i would put that as one of the best movies no, I'm kind of I'm going up through my list because I like I started saving our categories, which I know I need to send you because I keep slacking on that. Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, where where is Netflix at now? Uh, da, 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 da. I have this entire year of 2022. There is two, three, four, five, six, seven movies I've watched on Hulu or on Netflix. Right. And that's and two are blah. One's Curse of Bridge Hollow, which is fun, but like won't be like something I'd be like, oh, you need to watch this. Yeah. And then Holly Blood, Old People, and Texas Chainsaw. Oh, Holly Blood. Sorry, I forgot about Holly Blood. Thank God for fucking Holly Blood. 
like that was the other one that was decent on fucking netflix as well this year um anyway so hopefully streaming netflix goes back to getting good international films again that'd be nice netflix i don't expect you to have good films for this these this year but i would love it if you had some good international shit show up on your page that's okay i can read subtitles um right. and i mean worst case scenario we just throw it on dubs because you guys yeah. got dubbing too All right so we're excited to see what we'll talk about next week in terms of the theater watches and the and the you know P, what is it Prevo B uh, VOD VOD I don't want to say POD VOD um, yeah and just kind of as we work towards our year end show and our awards and our final list that we have for our top ten and I hope everyone enjoyed the new format we will be moving away as we said for movie reviews and sticking to this new format i think it's what people want to hear and well it's better for scott and i so yeah, it gives, uh, us, gives us more time to just watch random shit yeah and just talk about it have a conversation which we can do because we're such good friends unlike tim and daniel from the <laughs> horror for dummies podcast like tim's such a bully that daniel doesn't even come on wrestling for dummies anymore oh yeah poor, poor daniel love like, you, can you imagine, like daniel never says mean things about me now he usually just kind of scolds tim well he doesn't have a chance because tim just bullies him into it <laughs> i wish tim could see my smiling face right now as i'm smiling <laughs> as he cries um all joking your, aside. let me lick your tears up tim and let me waste lick something of good else. suffering tim uh please listen to the hoary for dummies podcast as well as the horror, or sorry, the Wrestling for Dummies podcast. Both are excellent, done by Tim Davis, as well as Daniel, uh, the mushroom. You definitely need to check those bad boys out. And also check out Rob Humphreys on this slasher, this horror life in slasher radio. They interview lots of big names and shit, and they're super impressive. They are. Um, in the meantime, Scott and I would like to thank you for listening, and we would also like to thank the Legion Podcast Network, which we are members of. or under the Kill the Cast feed. Uh, Legion Podcast Network is great. You can become a Patreon today for $3 a month. You get access to special shows. You get access to movie reviews. You can go into draws for um, codes and giveaways. And if you're not a Patreon yet... <laughs> What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Netflix, get better movies. Um, <laughs> so please join Legion Patreon today. We will be back again to sum up any more 2022s we watch. Talk about anything else we've been up to and give our thoughts on the theater releases this year and how we're thinking what maybe maybe what we're going to look forward to next year uh, besides cocaine bear which everyone Fuck in this yeah. planet is excited for cocaine bear so i don't know scott you got anything to say good to people i uh, just want to say uh once again thank you all for listening and sticking with us through all these years and like hope you guys yeah. like three like, years three year shit is this our three-year anniversary coming up scott yeah I, shit yeah technically I, well technically uh this is around the three years when we came up with the idea of the show and then in january is when we recorded so yeah it'll be three shit. years wow we've been doing this shit for three years <laughs> See, right? <laughs> wow um yeah thanks for sticking with us wow that's a long relationship for scott it, and i right and we hope you guys uh enjoy the new format going forward and also uh Hope you guys, uh, I know not everybody would probably listen to it, but I hope you guys enjoyed our uh, episode of the wrestling that we did with Rob Humphreys and our good old friend, Tim Davis. And uh, we'll probably do a couple more of those like oh, every will. so often. And they're just, they were fun because we're huge wrestling nerds. So like, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We know Willis loved it. So I'm glad, like, thank you for the feedback, Willis. Appreciate that. I uh, I already got the name for the next one. Oh, shit. One Night Stand Again, you up? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So maybe we'll do that in the new year sometime. Hell yeah, February, I am January, down. February, March, but just before WrestleMania. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, do we have a word to say goodbye to our friends, Scotty? Yes. Until next time, kitties. Unpleasant dreams. See ya.